So um, thanks everyone for joining uh, the GitLab meetup today. My name is John Coughlin. I'm on the um, community relations team at GitLab. And I manage a couple of programs, the meetups program um, that has recently moved to all virtual and our GitLab Heroes program, which is a recognition program for our top community contributors. And um, I see at least one of our heroes has joined us today. So thank you, Nika, for being here. I'll put that on your uh, tally there. Um, but yeah, one thing I always like to um, share at the beginning of uh, meetups, so I'm going to put a link in uh, the chat, is the GitLab code of conduct. Um, you know, we want to make sure that the community is welcoming and inclusive um, to everyone. And so, you know, I'd ask that you all take a second to review that uh, if you have not already. Um, and if anyone has um, any concerns they'd like to report in the Zoom chat, you can um, send me a direct message. Um, there's a kind of field, a two field, where you can toggle from everyone to an individual. Um, so feel free to send me a DM. Um, if you have any concerns, or you can send an email to evangelist at gitlab.com if you'd like to report any code of conduct violations. So yeah, we've been doing these virtual meetups for a while, for about six weeks now, and the results have been great. Um, as you can see in the chat, we have people joining from all over the world, which is really cool to see. Um, and yeah, it just makes for a fun event when we have this kind of global scale and global reach. Um, and I think it makes for more diverse um, audiences, which is great, more accessible to more folks. Um, and you get to meet, you know, folks from different parts of the world and, and kind of different cultures and different perspectives. So um, really cool. Another thing I like about um, the virtual meetups is that they're a little bit more collaborative. Um, so, you know, a lot of times people are, are joining us, you know, from in front of their laptop, maybe they have their keyboard and mouse with them. Um, so it's a they can be a little bit more hands on and we'll get into some of that um, towards the end of this meetup. Um, and it's also it's also a little bit easier to break the ice when we kind of force everybody into breakout rooms. Uh, and no one's, you know, needs to go and kind of butt into a conversation to meet other folks from the community. So it's, uh, the facilitation um, of the networking piece um, is also a cool advantage of these virtual events. And so I've been enjoying them and happy to be here with all of you today. For folks that are just joining um, the, the GitLab community, I just want to give a quick overview of you know, what GitLab is. Um, so GitLab is a complete DevOps platform delivered as a single application. So it's one interface, one permission model, you know, one kind of platform where the conversation um, and the work is happening. Uh, we have thousands of features. I think I saw something that we released 1900, more than 1900 features in the last um, three years was pretty amazing. Um, and a lot of those have come from community contributions. Uh, GitLab's an open core company and folks can contribute to you know, our product. They can contribute to our business through our, our handbook um, or they can contribute in other ways like giving talks about us, writing books and, and more that Ray will get into or, uh, later. Um, some other cool things about GitLab, we're the largest all remote company in the world. So for people that are just getting forced into remote work, um, I would encourage you to Google GitLab all remote and check out our remote work guide. There's lots of great information there from how to set up your desk to how to communicate and with your team to conducting remote interviews. Uh, lots of really helpful information for people that are, are new to remote work. Um, and yeah, our handbook, uh, you know, includes a lot more information than that. GitLab's uh, values include transparency. And I would say we're one of the most transparent companies in the world, in addition to being the biggest all remote company in the world. So you can see, um, you know, our company roadmap, our strategy, everything we do, how I run my programs, um, how Ray runs his programs is all documented in our handbook um, and available for you to see. So if you're looking for some inspiration, um, feel free to check that out. So today Ray's gonna do a presentation on contributing to GitLab. Then we're gonna go into breakout groups. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the breakout groups when um, Ray's done with his talk, but everyone's gonna be assigned to a room. They're gonna be random. We'll go in there, we'll have some group conversation and then we'll come back to the main room um, at the end, but you know, no pressure to participate in the breakout groups if that's not your thing. Um, and just, you know, would ask that folks, you know, kind of try to be present with us today. So if you could um, turn off your Slack notifications, close the other tabs that you have open, um, you know, and just, you know, take this time for yourself to, you know, learn about GitLab and, and listen to Ray's presentation. Um, I would ask that folks, you know, stay muted so that we don't distract our um, presenter. Um, and if you're comfortable, turn on your camera so that we can see you. 
Um, if you have questions along the way, use the chat box. Um, we'd love to hear from you and, and I'll, you know, if Ray's not seeing your questions, I'll interrupt him because he's my teammate and I can do that um, and make sure that he answers your questions. And, you know, we've seen with some of our recent meetups where community members are answering each other's questions, which is really cool. So if you know the answer to a question in there, feel free to throw in a response. Um, and if you want to tweet about um, the meetup, you can use hashtag GitLab meetup. Um, and I'll keep an eye on those and retweet my favorites. Um, yeah, and so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ray. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, John. And um, welcome, everybody. I, I see like north of like 20 people on the call. So it's great to uh, great to have you. I mean, first of all, hope you're all safe and well sheltered in place like like a lot of us are. Um, and yeah, I mean, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you about uh, contributing to GitLab. Uh, Sorry, let me advance my slide. Uh, so in addition to John and myself, I mean, Scott unfortunately couldn't join us today. He had some last minute thing come uh, come up, but he helped me with the, the presentation and he's here in spirit. Um, and he's one of the like active front end engineers that helped out, helped a lot with uh, community contributions. And he helped us sort of pilot this content uh, when we did an in-person event uh, at scale uh, uh, about six weeks ago. Uh, so this is who we are. And you can click on any of these links. Uh, you can click on uh, the photo of me, for example, that you can get, uh, you'll be taken to our team page and uh, you'll see our Twitter handles and, and GitLab handles. So if you wanna reach out to us, I mean, feel free to do that. And I posted this uh, link to the slide uh, on Twitter uh, and Reddit and forum yesterday. Uh, and so this is completely open. So feel free to refer to this after the, after the talk. Um, so this is uh, sort of the quick agenda. Uh, I mean, I won't go through all the all the topics here, but I wanted to sort of uh, um, focus this talk on, on you or even like pe people who've never contributed before. So if you've been a regular contributor, I mean, this might be a little too basic and, and uh, may not be that exciting or interesting. Uh, so if you're more experienced, if you can help out with questions on, on Zoom, like, like John had mentioned, um, so, I mean, basically, I mean, two things I want people to get out of after this meetup is, um, first of all, like how, where to find issues that you can contribute to and, and work on. And two, it's just a basic mechanics of, you know, how do, how do you submit your first MR? Uh, so during the breakout, hopefully we'll, we'll give you a chance to do that. I have a list of like a simple documentation errors that I found over the last week or so that, that people can work on if things all go well, you should be able to uh, hit the submit button on your MR in about 10, 15 minutes. Um, uh, so uh, John and I would be happy to, more than happy to help you with that uh, during the breakout or even after the, after the meetup today. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me uh, with questions on MRs. Um, so if you, if you have not contributed to GitLab in the past, uh, like John said, we're an open core company. Uh, both our enterprise and community edition of the software, the source code is uh, available. Uh, and, and the community edition is, is, uh, is based on an open source MIT license. Uh, so we welcome con contributions, I mean, both on, you know, paid version of GitLab and, and community editions. Uh, and one of the things that people ask me about uh, in terms of the GitLab community is, you know, the size of the community. That's a very fair question because, uh, you know, you obviously want to participate in a community that's growing and, and have a lot of other fellow contributors that, can, uh, that you can bond with or, or connect with. Uh, so I got, uh, uh, this is, I grabbed this chart from the main uh, uh, contribute page on, on, on GitLab.com. Uh, so a couple of numbers that I wanted to share. Uh, so on the right hand side of, of the slide, uh, the blue chart, be, uh, blue like a numbers or, or bars or, or dots basically show the number of contributors over the past couple of years. Uh, in 2019, we had you know, close to 900 people contributing to GitLab with merge requests, which is, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, and also that represents almost like 100% growth. Uh, year over year from 2018 to 2019. So yeah, I mean, it's it, this has been very heartwarming to see uh, community members continue to grow. Uh, so if you you know join the GitLab Open Source Project, you'll be joining a uh, lot of good company. And even in terms of like merge MRs, we've seen like a steady growth uh, from 2017 to 2024. 
Um, so, uh, you know, we've been pretty, obviously, both John and I and, and the rest of the GitLab team have been very excited with these with these growth. And I mean, some of these numbers already need to be uh, updated. I mean, we just hit like a 3000 contributors, it says 2500 plus. And I think when I looked at the data for the past 12 months, we've been a lot closer to 200 versus 185, like average contributors for uh, per month. I mean, we have a monthly release cycle. Um, so it's, um, so, uh, I mean, again, just wanted to point out that if you, uh, become a, uh, community members, um, and, and contribute merge requests, you'll be joining a, uh, a fine company of a lot of contributors out there. Um, so just wanted to share that really quick. Um, and so I wanted to highlight like four areas that people can contribute to, um, and, uh, I mean, people like when when you hear merge requests or or commits, people most typically think about code. Uh, and obviously, we love uh, code contributions that come from the community. But there are three other areas that I wanted to point out. And I'll, I left code uh, towards the end of the next slide, uh, so that I, I, I mean, I wanted to emphasize there are other areas where. Uh, people can contribute to, and you don't necessarily need to be a Ruby or Go expert uh, to contribute to GitLab, even even through merge requests. Um, so, I mean, the first area that I wanted to highlight is is UX design. If if user interface and use UX design improvement is what you're you're, you're passionate about, uh, the project that you can go take a look at is the GitLab design system. Uh, we have a, a catchy name. Uh, let me just click on a link here so you can see. Uh, called the pajama design system. Um, so, uh, so to catch a name for it. Um, so, I mean, it provides, uh, you know, design guidelines and various components uh, that goes into our, our UX at GitLab. Uh, so if you if this is an area that you're passionate about versus like writing Ruby code, I mean, we definitely welcome community contributions and, and a lot of our regular contributors have been active participants here. Uh, in the pajama design system. Uh, so I have a link for uh, UX issues that uh, that are open for uh, community contributions. And we also have, if you want to get more detail, we have tutorial slides and videos from uh, from the hackathon a couple of months ago that, that you can take a look at. It's, uh, I mean, it's not a long video, it's about 20 minutes. Uh, and one of our community con con contributors, George, I mean, went through details about pajama design systems and where community members can help. Uh, so that's one area uh, that's not uh, directly code related. And the second one is translations. Um, I mean, I was happy to see in terms of attend attendees, we have a lot of folks from outside of the US. Um, so this is, I wanna click on this link here on uh, translate.gitlab.com. And um, if you already have a logon on gitlab.com, you don't even need to create a separate account. You can just use your GitLab login to uh, help participate in translating GitLab uh, into different languages. Uh, so you'll see, I mean, last count I had was about 48 plus languages where uh, you'll see various levels of translations. Uh, Amharic, this is the one that got started uh, probably around February timeframe. And, but there are other languages like uh, simplified Chinese, Japanese, and German. They have like a very high levels of uh, completion in terms of uh, the strings that are translated. Um, so I'm gonna click on German here, just as an example. I saw a couple of people from Germany, including Nico. Um, so, whoops, it's asking me to log in and I'll just use my GitLab ID to go in there. So he, you'll see a list of translations that are waiting for, waiting to be translated. Uh, so you see those like a, ones highlighted in red. Uh, and and there are also like a suggestions from Google Translate and other tools that you can you can use as a guide, uh, or you can just enter your own translations here. Uh, so this is an area that's almost like I mean I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but if you look at the participants um, of people that are translating GitLab, I mean these are most almost exclusively community driven. Uh, so the translation strings are entered by community members and even the proofreaders who approve the translation requests are for the most part community members as well. I mean, so there are some GitLab team members that participate in this, uh, but I mean, this is, I mean, this is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, we, 
I mean, a lot of people think that uh, a lot of high tech software, the English, um, uh, having the user interface in English is, is, um, would be pretty adequate, but I think this helps lower the, lower the barrier to entry so any, anybody can participate in, and it's easier to use and understand. Uh, so just wanted to highlight translation as another area that people can contribute to and participate in. Uh, and again, there's a hackathon tutorial video that was, uh, oops, sorry, created by uh, a community member, Hannes, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, take a look at that. And I also have a blog post that I think I published uh, about 15 months ago, if you want to learn more details about how people have been contributing to translation. So that's another area where we can help, can, you can help us out. Um, moving to the next slide. Um, so, uh, I mean, I'll be talking about documentation in, in a bit uh, before we go to the breakout session. Uh, I mean, doc, the, if you go to docs.getlab.com, we, you know, that's our, uh, you know, quote unquote, single source of truth. If you want to learn about our product or, or even contributing to GitLab, uh, things are documented in, in docs.getlab.com. Uh, but, you know, we obviously welcome uh, your feedback in terms of, you know, how to improve documentation. Uh, so from simple spelling or grammar mistakes to, I mean, if things are not very clear, uh, I mean, obviously, we, you know, we have a great technical writing team uh, that work pretty closely with the product team members to, you know, uh, develop documentation. But I mean, we get great feedback from users about why certain things aren't very clear as, it lay, as, as it's laid out in documentation. And uh, you know, contributing to documentation is pretty simple. Uh, and let me go to a docs page uh, just to demonstrate. And we can go through this in, in the breakout session as well. Um, so let's say like you're on this page and you find uh, like a typo or simple things you want to fix. Uh, all you need to do is basically scroll all the way down uh, to the page and you'll see this edit this page button uh, or link and just click on that and then uh, you know basically you'll be able to hit the edit button and then proceed from there um, so i mean it's pretty straightforward and streamlined uh, i mean this goes uh, applies not just to documentation but our, also our website as well uh, about gitlab.com uh, if you find an area that you want to uh, contribute to just hit the edit this page button at the bottom and you'll be off on you'll be on your well on your way to um, make your contributions and if you haven't created a fork uh, previously it'll even prompt you to create a fork you'll see a button uh, up on the right uh, so it's a pretty streamlined way of doing it uh, so you don't have to figure out where the documentation is in the directory structure and then uh, using the command line uh, so that's uh, a simple way that you can start contributing to GitLab with with your first merge request and last but not least, uh, uh, you know, if you're an uh, experienced developer in Ruby or other languages that GitLab uses, like JavaScript uh, for a lot of the front, front end work, uh, you will mostly like uh, have to uh, install a GitLab development kit or GDK. I mean, GDK uh, basically lets you create a uh, self-contained uh, GitLab environment on your, on your workstation or your laptop. Uh, and I mean, it does take time and effort to get this installed. Uh, I think for most people, I mean, they get this uh, up and running in about an hour or two. And I mean, you'll probably need uh, a decent machine with, for example, with four gigs of memory. Uh, but you can get de more details on this. We have a playlist for GDK tutorial uh, that uh, some of our engineers have been recording. Uh, in terms, like, I mean, there's a video definitely on, on sort of getting started or, or getting GDK installed on your laptop. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that. So once you have the GDK up and running, you can do all the testing with your changes, like locally on your machine, uh, before asking it to be uh, merged into GitLab. Um, and uh, so uh, there's also a link to a development guideline at the bottom of, the, oops, sorry, bottom of the page that they, you can take a look at as well. Um, so, I mean, Scott's not here, uh, but I mean, if you have further questions on the GDK, again, this is a little bit more involved uh, and requires some uh, uh, resources in terms of I mean, good local machine and, and obviously technical expertise, but happy to answer any questions you have uh, if you reach out to me uh, either directly or on Gitter that I'll talk about in a minute. 
so let me pause here really uh, for a second. Uh, I don't think there are any questions on the chat, but if you people have any questions that you want to verbalize, feel free to unmute and ask me any questions you have. I have a question, Ray. Yeah. For first time contributions to, um, you know, documentation, are those folks um, still um, eligible for like the first MR um, submitted mug? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. So, I mean, for, I mean, you may have seen on Twitter, like if you uh, search for, I mean, hashtag, I'll type this on the chat. Uh, So if you search for this and GitLab in Twitter, you'll probably see pay people celebrating their uh, the mugs they received. And this we count everything in terms of MR. So it doesn't have to be code. We count documentation. Uh, we count updates to our handbook, for example, like a simple typo. So anybody with the first contribution uh, uh, will roll out a new process so you can order a mug when you when you have your first MR mer merge. So the short answer to, to you, John, is yes. So every MR, whether it's code documentation or UX or anything else, we absolutely you know count all of them. So. Any other questions or? If not, I'm happy to move forward. Right. Okay, so places to start. I mean, how, I mean, another good question that I mean, first time contributors when you join an open source community is, you know, where do I find issues that that I can work on? So I have a sample query here that I'll just click on, uh, and I'll show it on the screen. Um, so basically, I search for issues under like a GitLab org, um, so the main GitLab project, uh, and just search for labels uh, accepting merge requests and has a milestone of backlog. So I mean, this basically you know signifies that uh, the product and engineering team has has looked at the, these issues and they know that this is something that I mean. GitLab engineers aren't going to work on uh, in the immediate future. So that's why you have the uh, uh, milestone of backlog and added a, uh, a label accepting merge requests. Uh, so this basically shows you over like a 240 issues that, that people can pick up. And I also chose a weight of one. Uh, so we have like a weight in terms of difficulty, one being easiest and 10 being the hardest. So if you wanna uh, pick up an easy issue that you wanna work on, this is a reasonable query to start with. Um, so, I mean, you have issues, I mean, here's a, a user UI or user, user experience related one from Enrique, uh, like some of the front end ones that I see here. Uh, so here are issues that you can, if you're interested in working on them, you can just mention me, just type in RPAC in the comments as I'm interested in working on this and I'll be happy to assign the issue to you. Uh, so this is one example of query you can do. And then as I noted in the slide, there are other queries that you can do as well. So I'm just gonna add a label. Uh, we also have a label for first time contributors. So good for first time contributors. And if I just rerun the query here, uh, this issue will get whittled down to about eight, yeah, 18 issues. So, I mean, there are a couple of different ways that you can do. You can uh, search like a certain labels, like good for, good for first-time contributors. And then uh, the other label that you can look at, if you're just only interested in documentation, you can add the documentation label here as well. Uh, so if you wanna continue narrowing it down to find an issue that you wanna work on. And as I mentioned, if there are, there are certain uh, issues that you're interested in working on, like feel free to ping me or anybody else on the issue from GitLab and uh, happy to assign it to you once you have your MR going. Um, so that's uh, one quick way of sort of, um, a qu quick way of finding issues that you can work on. Um, but if you find other like improvement areas, for example, if there's a documentation change that you wanna make, but you don't, you don't, you can't find an issue that's associated with that. Uh, don't worry about it, just create an MR. Uh, having an issue is not a requirement. I think some communities where they have rules like you can't work on anything without an issue, but that's not the case at GitLab. If you wanna create an issue and create an MR uh, subsequently, that, that's, that's great. But I mean, creating an issue or having an issue is not an absolute requirement. So if you find something that you, you wanna improve or fix, 
you know, we welcome your MRs and, and just, um, you know, ping me or others at GitLab so we can triage it and, and get it to the right reviewers. Uh, so that's how you find issues at GitLab. Uh, so where to get help as you're working on MRs? Uh, the good place to start is, is a Gator channel. Um, so I'll just click on this here. Uh, so, uh, so John, this just got rolled out. So we have threads that are now supported in Gitter, uh, just like Slack. So people here ask questions and a lot of times I jump in and, and help out with questions as you're contributing, but uh, we have like active community members like Rajendra and Lee Ticket that are very active in terms of like, answering questions or, or helping you out. So this is a great resource. Uh, we have close to like 500 people in this ch uh, contributor channel uh, and there's an, a, a related channel for heroes as well. Uh, so Gitter is a great tool to use. And again, like you can just log in with your GitLab ID or a GitLab login or your Twitter account. Uh, so you don't have to create a separate separate account to get involved in having conversations in Gitter. So this is a great place to um, uh, reach out to other community members, myself, and, and get help uh, as you're working on uh, your merge request. And we also have at GitLab, a uh, group of people call merger request coaches. I mean, there's a group of, I believe we have 10 people. Uh, they have experience in both like back end and front end and other areas. Uh, I mean, you can find them on our team page that I re referenced earlier, uh, but you can also mention them directly uh, by typing this text here in your, whoops, sorry, hit the wrong key on, on your merge request to get their attention. If for some reason, if your MR hasn't been triaged in, in a timely fashion or you, you don't feel like you're getting people's attention, uh, I mean, feel free to reach out to the coaches. And the other thing I wanted to point out, I mean, not just the coaches, but it's a completely fair game to reach out to anybody at GitLab. I mean, we're, John and I are GitLab employees, but before that, we're GitLab community members, and we we owe it to everybody in the community, whether you work for GitLab or not, to to be responsive. Uh, so if you feel like your questions not getting answered or things are, I mean, people for whatever reason are are not being responsive, feel free to reach out to people directly. What you know, if you know, even if you don't work at GitLab, that's a completely fair game. It's a normal practice within the company. Uh, and then if you want to read a long list of like a developers and maintainer, I also have a link to the page here. Uh, so you can sort of identify people that you want to reach out to. Um, but like I said, don't be shy about reaching out to people like GitLab uh, or, um, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll get the help you need. Uh, if your preference is to, you know, communicate via email, uh, send an email to contributors at GitLab.com. This email comes to me and my manager, David Planella. Uh, so, uh, and then, yeah, so email is another channel where you can, where you can reach out to. Um, so one quick thing. Uh, so in a couple of weeks, we'll have our uh, quarterly hackathon uh, that's, that's going to happen. So this is a virtual event. And um, I was excited to come do this uh, uh, virtual meetup today because this is a great segue into the hackathon in a couple of weeks. Um, so uh, this is a virtual event that's held over two days. And it's open to everybody. You don't need to register. Uh, like People can come in and, and just uh, start contributing. Uh, and we have a lot of tutorial sessions, like I referenced earlier, uh, where we're going to have a tutorial session from, from the monitor team, uh, if you're interested in GitLab monitor uh, stages, uh, for example. And then we also have, um, uh, you know, cool prizes that we uh, award to people who, who have, even if single merge request is merged within a, like a 10 day period, like you'll, you'll get your uh, GitLab swag. Uh, so it's a fun event uh, to participate. I mean, you'll definitely see a lot more communication and chatter happening on the Gitter channel. So it's a good way to sort of bond with other community members as well. Uh, so I'll be updating the hackathon landing page uh, sometime today with the, uh, we'll announce the tutorial session and the prizes. Uh, so I mean, uh, I encourage everyone to participate on uh, May 13th and 14th. Uh, it's happening in a couple of weeks. Um, so that's a quick uh, sort of advert, advertising on the hackathon. Um, so uh, before we go to the breakout, um, 
just a couple of things I, I wanted to do. Uh, I mean, one of the things I wanted to do, if you have, especially if you haven't any, had any experience submitting an MR, like we want you to go through the process or become more familiar with it. Uh, and I created an issue of simple documentation fixes uh, or typos that I found uh, that people can pick up. Uh, so when you uh, create an MR, uh, just mention me in the MR. Uh, I also had a sample text, text in here that you can copy and paste. Just, just get my, this is a good way to get my intention and just tell me this is from the virtual meetup today. And uh, if you submit your MRs by end of the day tomorrow in your local time zone, uh, uh, be happy to send out uh, a, a pair of GitLab socks. Uh, that's been pretty popular. Um, so um, yeah. Uh, so hopefully this is sort of a fun way to sort of get your feet wet if you haven't done it before. And then let me just quickly go to the issue. Uh, so I think I have about like a 20 docs improvement. Uh, I mean, these are usually like quick fixes. Like like the first one is like a missing the word too. Uh, so I try to be expli explicit in terms of where the, the errors are. Um, so I, John, I assume we'll go into like a two breakout rooms, right? And then, you know, we can just uh, split this list in half. Um, I mean, John, in your, like a meetup group, you can take the first major, uh, first two major bullet points, like a documentation guidelines and uh, contributor and development docs. I think there are about 10 to 11 issues there and I, I can take the rest and then encourage people to submit an MR and then, then we can go from there. Or, you know, if you, I don't want to force people to submitting an MR. Uh, if you want to just ask questions or if you want to chat about something else, it's completely fair game as well. But if you want to submit an MR even after the call uh, by end of day tomorrow, uh, be happy to uh, review them and, and then uh, help them get it, get them triage or even merge them if it's a, if it's a quick fix that I can merge. So I think that's about it in terms of slides. I want to make sure if you have any questions and uh, any anything else that, that you want to discuss. Just looking through the chat. Uh, just a quick question. So the yeah. issues that you uh, identified on your page, would those show up also uh, with the query that you mentioned earlier with the the except uh, first time, no. uh, first time, and also the backlog and weight of one. No, it probably won't show up on that query because I, I didn't add like accepting contribution, accepting merge requests. That's my bad. But uh, yeah, if you if you query for good for first time contributors, you'll definitely see it. So okay, thank you. Just do that. But you know that's a that's a very good question. Um, but um, cool. Any other questions or anything else I can I didn't cover that I can help with? All right, cool. Well, thank you, Ray. Um, one thing we like to do at these meetups is ask folks after the presenter's done to unmute and do a round of applause. So if everybody could just. Um, unmute themselves and give Ray um, a round of applause. Thank you, Ray.